all right for today i want you all to open up your meta twitter for platform because uh we'll be doing we'll be working together tonight we'll be looking at charts analyzing charts using all that we have learned and then seeing how we can get started uh taking trades in the forex market okay uh, the more you do this, the more you look at your charts, the more you get familiar with uh, how the market moves, how price moves in the market. So it's very important to note that. Uh, if you can hear me clearly, I can see my screen, please put a one in the chat box. If you can hear me clearly, I can see my screen, put a one in the chat box. Okay, Felix can hear me clearly. Violet can hear me clearly. Awesome. I just have two respondents. Out of others, can others hear me? Mr. Yajili, can you hear me? Mr. Okay, Mr. Meg has spoken already in the class. Okay, beautiful. All right. Now, when you come to the forex market, once you launch your MetaTrader for the first thing that you want to look at for is before you say you want to trade any trade, what is this? What is the chart telling you? Okay, what is the chart telling you? Now I opened on my screen. You can open it right on at your end also. Euro JPY. Okay, just by the this is market watch. It's Euro JPY. You can just right click. Let's and then click on a, a chart window. Of course, I believe by now you know how to set your template you know, to the property. So I will be doing that. We've already saved our template as class. So I just change it to class. So by default, the market is going to give me the one hour time frame. The one hour time frame. So, but I need to analyze this market before I, I, de I determine where I want to trade with. Am I going to buy or am I going to sell? Okay. Now you need to write this down. Higher time frame gives you an overall picture of exactly what is happening in the market. Higher time frames. Higher time frames give you the overall picture, a clearer picture of what is happening in a particular currency market. Have you written that down? So I don't expect anybody to uh, just open chart app. Ah, one hour time frame. Ah, the thing is going down. You're jumping into the market. So it's going up. Just jump into the market. That is very wrong. So how do we do it? We go to the most highest time frame, which is the monthly time frame. I want to have an overall view of what is happening in the market. Where are my support and my resistance areas? That is the first thing I want to check in. At the multi time frame, you know, is price going towards the support or is going towards the resistance uh, in an overall uh, picture of the currency pair? So, looking at Euro JPY, I can see that I have support areas right here support, resistance, support. Okay, that's one support area around here. So, what do I do? I'm going to mark it out. Some people use boxes. And some people can use lines, okay? But what you know is that this line will be telling one one two point five two four. But you should know that it is an area. It's not just a specific price like this, okay? It's an area. It's an area like you can see. It's an area. But so look at here. It was a resistance. It got broken. Came back and turned to support. Then market rally started. It went up. By the time it came back again to that same area, the support was still holding, pushed it back up, and then there was a war in here. It was going up, it was not either going up nor down. Then this time around, it went up and broke it down. Then came back to convert it to a what? A resistance before dropping. By the time the price came back, it broke through it, went up, and then came back to that same area, and the support held. Okay, support held. 
Now what is price doing? Price is coming back to this area. Price is coming back to this area. So for me, uh, overall on the multi time frame, I'm seeing uh, the, the, the overall trend to be what? Bearish already. That price is coming to test. Either I come to test this support or break it. If it breaks it, then I'll be looking at the next support area, which is right here. Right here. You can see. We have support here. We have support here. So if it breaks through this place, then it's a potential that may come down to this place. But as it is now, we are looking at this area where price is coming. And of course, you can see that the trend is bearish. The trend is bearish. Okay? Just to satisfy my curiosity, I want to know resistance area in case price divide the size to reverse. <coughs> Excuse me, I need to take a couple of words. Sorry about that. All right. So, like I was saying, you can see already from the overall trend in the monthly time frame. That's the that's the grand part of uh, the trend that market is actually coming down to this place. Okay. And I can even decide. Okay, I'm seeing a channel kind of here. Here. Okay. Let me see. I'm seeing a channel. You can see price was touching this area and then dropping. And then at the other end also, I have uh, something like this. Price also touching like this, okay, and coming down. Price also touching this area here and coming down. So that it looks like a channel that the price is moving in this in between these two uh, trends. That these two trend lines. We call these lines trend lines, okay. This for trend line. This for horizontal line. This for vertical line okay these are the two that we use this rectangular box okay so i'm done with um monthly time frame the next thing i want to do of course i do it in trading uh via the multi time frame because if i decide to do that if i have to sell take profit here put my stop loss here that means i will be risking from where the price is i'll be risking about 610 feet Imagine how much that is, and my take profit will be about uh, 492 pips. Okay, so that is too much for somebody that has a, a big money like my, like me. So I won't say small money, you know. So uh, then I now go to the weekly time frame. Let me see what is happening, where price is currently, where price is currently. Okay, now the weekly time frame is also showing me that price is actually in a what bearish trend. Okay, in a bearish trend, and then I can see also that there is a kind of uh, resistance and support around here. Okay, you can see resistance now to have support. Price came and touched it again and bounced back. Okay, price price has not touched it again, but price is coming towards it. So I need to be alert with this information because for price to come down to where we're looking at before, it has to break through this line of uh support right here that to break through this line of support or else we can see price actually coming sorry i needed this can see price actually coming ah, what am i picking now? <laughs> okay can see price coming to touch this place and then bounce back when we bounce back to this place you know before before coming down we don't want that to happen to us suddenly Without us knowing that it's going to happen. Okay, so our first level of, uh, so which means for us to trade, we have to first look at this level first. This level first before we start looking at this level. So we now have a higher level than the level that we are looking at. Okay, so this is the weekly time frame. Then I now go to the daily time frame and see what the daily time frame is, is saying. Daily time frame is also 
conforming with uh, what um, the weekly time frame is doing. That is uh, the support and resistance area around this thing. So this is giving me clarity that if I want to do this, I want to trade this market at all, all I need to do is what? I need to find a way to sell this market and probably put my first take profit at this support area first. And then if there's now a break, I can come in again and then look for the look to what take profit at the next support area. So this is my first area. This is my first area of uh, of uh, target. So this support is my first area of target. You see, we have not even used it that trader and all that. We have only used support, resistance, and channels. Okay. So there's no other. Now this is the support here also on on the daily time frame. Now where is the resistance in case price wants to go back? Uh, from what I can see from this chart, I see a resistance around this, this place. Around this place from here, you can see boom. You can see support, support, resistance. You can see price came back and touched it. Resistance then went away, came back, price danced around that area. Then it came back here and see forming res support here, resistance here, support here, resistance here. So this area is also an area of resistance. If price decides to come back up, okay, we might see price probably touching around around this place. Okay. So that's for the daily time frame. Now finally for me, I I conclude my analysis on the four hours time frame. Okay, on the four hours time frame. Let's see what is happening. Let me see if I can shift this. Okay, beautiful. So as you can see now, uh, currently what is the uh, market doing? Market is giving us. I'm seeing a kind of a. Who can tell me what this pattern is? Can somebody put in the chat box? What is this pattern? Put in the chat box. What pattern is this? This is what I can see right here on the four hour time frame. What pattern is this? Price was bearish and then it started moving sideways. What pattern do we call this? Put in the chat box quickly. Flag. Don't just say flag go. There are, there are two different levels of flag. They're better. Bearish flag. Beautiful. Somewhat a bearish flag. Any other name? Any other contrary opinion? Bearish flag. So what kind of pattern is this? Is it a reversal pattern? Is it a continuation pattern? Uh, is it a bilateral pattern? What kind of pattern is it? I'm waiting. Beautiful. Are you are you asking me? With this, you are putting question mark there. <laughs> it's a continuation pattern. It's actually a continuation pattern. After the after the market broke through this, uh, this um, you can see there was a there was a bullish ascending right here. It was a reversal pattern, okay, the market reverse, and now it's giving us a continuation pattern, which means we're expecting market to break to the downside. And then when it breaks, if it breaks to the downside, if it breaks below this, this thing that you're looking at if it's small resistance and support, okay, this, this thing that I think, if you go to the lower time frame, it's very big. Let me show you. Let me go down to 15 minutes. Sorry. Is actually the size of my screen. Okay, so this involves on four hours is looking like a small thing, but on the 15 minute time frame, that's about a 50 pip distance. About 50 pip distance. Okay, this four hours, this is 15 minutes. So it's it's really something. So what we are looking at is a break below this. One is a break below this. And we what we what we are going to sell 
this market. So what do you do? What we have just done now is we have set our trap down. We have set our trap down. We are now waiting for uh, to, to, for us to get a trigger. To support to get a trigger. Now, how do we now come into this market? What we are waiting for is a break below. That means one market can still be playing inside, but anytime it comes below this market, okay, what I'll wait for is for this market to break through. Some people can actually want a break. Some people can jump in. But I don't always advise that we jump in to the market like that. What we'll do is we'll wait for a retest of this support area, a retest of this support area. So this will be our entry. When market now starts dropping. Now when a retest, it now gives us, can give us an engulfing candle, can give us a, a pin bar, that's an inverted armor, okay? And give us all those uh, candlestick patterns around this place. That's going to give us a way to enter the market. Enter the market. Let me show you an example of something that happened before. You can see when this market was coming up and started giving us an ascending, an ascending wedge. Okay, you can see this. This is an ascending wedge right here, which is a, a reversal pattern. You can see the price actually broke through broke through right here what did it do it came back and they tested and they gave us the engulfing camp this is the best way so if you are seeing this particular chart pattern this will have been the entry after this engulfing candle can see this candle engulfed the body of the last candle okay so it will have been the entry so this place was the entry for this particular trade entry here and then you are selling then you start selling, okay? And then of course, you put your stop loss above the wedge right here. This is where your stop loss would be, okay? Stop loss here. It is bearish engulfing candle, which is and so exactly that kind of a thing we are looking, we are waiting for. We are waiting for right here. We want there to be a break. The market comes to reset and give us a bearish move, whether a bearish engulfing candle or a bearish. Uh, um, inverted pin or a tweezer, a tweezer top, okay, a tweezer top, you know, all those candlestick patterns that we look at, we must look for it, because uh, if market comes back and does not give you all those candlestick patterns, it means that it's probably going to, probably what we call a fake out, a fake out is when market comes, as if it has broken a particular level and then it just goes back, you know, Candlestick pattern will help you to know whether there's going to be a fake out or not. Okay, I'll talk more about fake out much more later. But entry into a, a trade like this, I want there to be a break of this candle. Then market comes to retest this candle and then give us a candlestick pattern, a bearish candlestick pattern for us to go down. For us to go down. Okay, for us to go down. So very important. Look at this place also. Just to give you buttress the example. Market was going bullish and they gave us a bearish wedge. And see that wedge right here. This is a bearish wedge, right? This is a bearish wedge. This is a bearish wedge. What happened? Market. Let me, let's make it clearer. Market was 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 going sideways, going sideways, okay? And all of a sudden it gave us an a, a bullish and gothic candle here. That is already given me an indication. Number one, when it was coming down, it first gave me a hammer, okay? The BS decided wanted to come down again. The next thing I saw a bullish and gothic candle and then there was a break above. When I see something like this, I don't even wait. I don't even wait because market has actually given me a bullish, a bullish pattern, a bullish move, a candlestick pattern that tells us that market is going back up. Okay, it's going back up. Now, let's. Uh, is this clear? Please put two in the chat box if if we are good. What I've just done so that we can look at another chart together. 
Is it flexibly? Okay, beautifully. Okay, all right. So let's look at another currency pair. Now somebody should give me a currency pair. This time around, I want you to give me a currency pair. Somebody should put a currency pair in the chat box and we'll look at it. Euro USD. Euro USD. There's nothing like AUD cap. Who we'll put AUD cap there? Correct yourself, Mr. Natio. I'm sure that's a cat. Ah. Okay, 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 okay. It's enough. I don't want more. <laughs> let's have zero USD. People are bombarding me. All right, let's have zero USD. Zero USD. Okay. So let's do a fresh one. Zero USD. Window. Chat window. Okay. What do I do? Change it to our template. What do I want to check also? I want to check my monthly time frame. I have to clear all this here. So control B, control A, delete. To clear every drawing on your chart. Okay? To clear every drawing on your chart. So what can I see? This is where price is currently. What is close to price? Number one, I am having this support that is very close to price. Note all this is all this period we are seeing they are yen. This is a whole year. This is a whole year. A whole year. So this is since uh, 2014. So this has been a support that's been holding since 2014. And what is market doing? Market is currently coming back to this support. Okay, that is one. That is one information. Market will give you information. So I already have one information. If I most of the time, if you should have a journal, you put it in your notes. Okay, market of multi time frame is moving towards. Uh, all time support. I mean, um, for five years, 2014 20, to now, that many years, that's our six years. It's going towards six year support. Okay? Six year support. You can put it down in your daughter. It helps you so that next time you are coming to the chat, you don't need to start uh, re analyzing. Okay? So this is the closest assistance on. Monthly time frame, okay. So the stands for monthly time frame. All right. Now we don't take a decision right here on the monthly time frame, but we just know that market, as you can see, market from the resistance here, support, resistance, support. It broke the resistance. It came, it came to retest it and gave us a what? Engulfing candle. You can see all these things work. It works on every time frame. Market, these are monthly, monthly candles though. Monthly, each candle forms in a whole month. Okay? So, it broke it, came back, came back to test it, gave us a, a bullish engulfing candle, you know, pushed the price up. Market came back again. Okay, to so that same, and then converted it to a what? To a support. And then it broke through it again. And then it came back to what? Touch it. Look at the retest right here. Came back to retest it with a doji candle. Imagine for the whole month, just gave a doji candle to test the resistance again. Now, price moved back down. We have a bearish move. Okay. What happened was that market opened right here. Okay. Opened above, pushed up, then pushed down, pushed up again before it closed. But it closed, at, uh, the close was lower than the open. That's why it finished bearish. And then we are, this is the new month in which we are in. In which we are in. Alright, so that's the information we have. Information on monthly time frame is that TCA support market is coming towards it. Okay, but let's see what is happening during the week. During the week, looking at the week, what can we see? What can we see? Of course, I can see a trend. Market is actually moving along this trend. Have it? It was hitting this area, and the market has it's always been pushed back whenever it gets to this point. See, when it came again to that point, it pushed it back. Came again to that point, pushed it back. Okay? Pushed it back. 
Can you see it? Market has been pushing it back right there. So I just do that. Let's just let's keep that. Okay? Now, is there any area for support and resistance that we can see on the weekly time frame that we couldn't see on the monthly time frame? Yes, my answer is yes. I can see support, 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 resistance, resistance, support around this place. Okay, so let me just draw that tiny area. That tiny area, I can see. Let me expand it. You can see this support area, support area, market broke through, came back again, made the support, went away, came back, support, broke through it, made the resistance. Resistant, resistant, broke through it, made the support before flying up. And see, this bearish candle made the support before flying up. Okay? After flying up, it came back to touch it again, you know, and then pushed it up. Pushed it up right here. Market came back, broke through it, came back, broke through it, came back again. If you can see clearly well, I can see an, a kind of a head and shoulder right here. But Probably on the lower time frame, you see it more clearly. But I can see market from the head here, shoulder here, another shoulder here. But let's look at daily time frame. Okay. Before I do that, I think I can pick another area right here. Okay, right here. I can pick another area right here. Support, support, resistant, resistant. Okay, so let me go to daily time frame. Now, we can see the kind of a head and shoulder right here. This is shoulder, shoulder, head. Shoulder, shoulder, head, which is a reversal pattern. So market actually, when it got to this support area, what happened? It, it reversed. With the, this was the reversal candle. This candle was the reversal candle. It was bearish, 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 bearish. When it got to what? this area of support what happened he gave us a strong bullish engulfing candle a strong bullish engulfing candle if you had entered the trade when this bullish engulfing candle closed your your stop loss will have been below this bullish engulfing candle okay but you could actually have been able to enter at a better price you know maybe on a lower time frame but if you are trading off the daily time frame, your entry will be when this bullish candle closed and your stop loss will be below the bullish, some few feet below the bullish candle, which you will still be in profit if that is what you are doing. In two days, you are already in profit and then the profit is moving. Now we know that uh, as against our overall movement of price coming down, price wants to go up again to test some areas before it pushes down. So which means based on the daily time frame, we are seeing an upward movement of price for now. Okay? So and as it's moving up, where is it most likely to to probably experience a stop? Where is it most likely to experience a stop? Remember this area that we put. Sorry. Remember this area, this will be my first area that I'll be looking at. That when price comes back to this area, there's probability that it can decide to come down. Okay? Or it breaks and goes to retest again to form a double top. Okay, but as it is now, price is going back up. So let me go to my four hour time frame. Now I know that currently price is in a bullish trend. It's in a bullish trend. Okay? Price is in a bullish trend. And is there any pattern that I'm seeing? Of course, there are patterns. I can see a, a clean trend line. Okay, a clean trend line right here. You know, a bullish trend must have higher highs and higher lows. So this is an higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Price is going up to form another higher high. Okay, so. I can actually draw. Now this line we are drawing is not that exactly to touch that line. It may not 
touch exactly, but I know in between in between these two lines, that is what where market is actually oscillating up and down. Okay, so expect market is pushing up again to come at higher high, and then if I check the four-hour time frame, I see that there is also an area of support and resistance around here. Am I right? Support it can turn it to what? Resistance, it broke it, turned it to support, support, it broke it, came back and turned it to resistance. Now price came back. When it got to this point, what happened? Give us a pin back. Now when price was coming and touched this resistance area, it gave us a what? Inverted armor, or we we'll call it a pin back right here, which told us that this market is coming now. Okay, when it got to this point, it gave us a what? We're having bearish candle, bearish candle, bearish candle, all of a sudden, when it got to this point, this area of uh, diagonal support, what happened? It gave us a what? What kind of candle is this? Can somebody tell me? What kind of candle is this? What candle stick, pat what candle stick pattern is this? This bullish candle, put in the chat box. Yeah, put it in the chat box, put it in the chat box. What candlestick pattern is this? Please write it, write it properly. Okay, my cursor is not showing. This candle right here. This candle right here. It must be internet that is making you not see my engulfing candle. What kind of engulfing candle? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lusoji. You, it's a bullish engulfing candle. Where is a bullish engulfing candle at its support area? Okay? It is a short sign that market has reversed. A bullish engulfing candle at its support area. This is a support area. So it's a diagonal support. We have learned that in our, I don't know if it's third class or fourth class. So, in this area, you can see market give us a bullion government. So this is an entry for us. Entry, you put your stop loss below, and then let it ride. As it is now, we are riding Euro USD up. Okay, we are riding it up. Up. We are riding it up. So anybody that is selling Euro USD is wrong. You can't be selling Euro USD at this time. You have to do what? Buying Euro USD. You have to be buying Euro USD. Okay, now, now, if I want to enter into this market, how do I come in? Should I just jump in? Where will I put my stop loss? Those are some questions you need to ask yourself. Okay, that's why sometimes we have to go to lower time frame to see a possible area where we can enter this moving train, this bullish moving train. Okay, where can we enter this bullish moving train? Okay, very simple. Now this is a 15 minute time frame. Can we see any pattern or something that can help us to enter this market? Okay. Now this will have been a good entry if you saw it. This is a very strong bullish and lovely candle. We will have entered the market at the close of this candle. I stop loss to be below this candle. Below this candle. Okay. Below this candle, market is still play around, but the expect that to continue up. So you will have put your stop loss right below this candle, okay? And how do you do that? You click on new order on your chart. You pick your lot size, the smallest is 0.01, that is what is here. Your stop loss will say it's going to be below this candle. So what do I want to look look at? I'm going to look for what price is below that candle. Using the cross air, this this tool is called the cross air. This tool is called the cross air. You can use Control F to auto pick it. Control F, okay. It is going to tell you the price at the particular area. So we are looking at this area, and to your right, where the price are, you can see what the price is. Uh, so a little bit below, compete below that engulfing candle, okay. One point zero nine six two eight. 1.09628. That'll be my stop loss. 
to it. And then uh, my take profit, of course, I'm looking at four hours. Where on four hours is it possible? Where is the next level of resistance? That is this level. Look at four hours. You can see there's a level of resistance right here. So I can put my first stop loss. Sorry, my first take profit at this first level of resistance. Let me put a line. So you see what I'm talking about. You can see resistance, resistance, resistance. So price can come made or be a reaction. So 1.1030, I'll put there, 1.10302, 1.10302, okay? That's where my target will be to take profit. So what do I do? I click on buy. I click on buy. So that is one way to enter into this market and um, we are almost in profit anyway, but of course, our, our loss, if we lose this market, we'll be losing about $1.88, $1.88, $1 and if we win, we'll be winning about, uh, where's our, okay, $4.86, what ratio is that, $1.88 to $4.86, what ratio is that? About one to four, about one to four risk reward. That's what we call risk reward. How much are you risking to how much are targeting? Your risk to your target. We call risk reward in forex. So our risk reward is about one to four, which is very beautiful, very beautiful trade. Okay. So you can see, I'm sure we're already in profit. Okay, almost minus zero point zero one is our profit currently. So, but we're already in profit, if not for uh the commission that the broker took from us okay we're actually in profit already okay but we have to pay our commission we have to pay and the price must be more than this commission before we can be in profit before we can actually be in a uh a net profit but already the trade is in profit okay so that is that so that is that for this trade so we can just target this area it doesn't mean that price will not pass that area, but at least to protect yourself, still you come out of this thing. You now wait. We price break through this resistant area, or if you want to come back to this point. Okay? So you have to wait. Can you see we're already in profit? We're already in profit right now. We're already in profit right now. So this is how to trade. We've not used any indicator. We have just used price action price action, just what we are seeing, chart analysis, what our eyes can see, what our eyes can see, that's what we are trading, okay, that's what we are trading, we cannot do probably confirmation by using indicators, but when we get to the quarter class, we'll see how we can apply indicators to our trade, but as you can see, this is how we will do it, this is how we do it, all that I've learned already is good enough for you to start trading this forex market, now please, is this, uh, put three, Put three if this is clear. Put three in the chat box if this analysis is clear. If I didn't uh, say something <laughs> that is above your head, I want you to put three in the chat box. Put three in the chat box. Beautiful. Forex is not difficult. Once you can, your eyes can see things. Once your eyes can see patterns in the market, Forex is not difficult. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so let me look at the, the next pair that somebody dropped. After Euro USD, what do we have? Euro USD, we have AUD. I'm saying AUD card, well, let me see. AUD card, okay. AUD card. So let's look at AUD card. AUD card. AUD card. All right. AUD card. This is how we make money in Forex. This is how we make money in Forex. It is not rocket science. Let's clear up all this. Okay, Control V, Control A, delete. All right. Okay, so what's happening? Wow, this money is definitely looking jagger jagger. Okay, 
All right, the first thing I want to see is where is price? Price is right here. This is where price is. Okay? What has happened in this market? Market has actually crossed a support area turned resistant. Okay? This support area was broken and then it was detected and then we had a bearish engulfing candle. Right? Right here, bearish engulfing candle. This support area broken. The tested bridge and rubbing candle and price drops down to this point. It dropped down to this point. Okay. You can see where it drops up to. There was another area of support and resistance right here. You can see that was where price dropped. You can see that area. Okay. So and just give us a <laughs> one candle where it's a multi time frame. So you see stay better on lower time frame okay so i can see price is coming back it's actually coming back to that area of resistance as well that's what i can see so i write that in my notes price is returning back to area of resistance monthly resistance okay in fact yearly resistance since 2012 this market was resist was support 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 and they got broken okay now it's a resistance so let's see weekly time frame what is happening still the same thing market is coming back up to that point but there was a there's a level of uh, reaction around here there's a level of reaction around here there's a level of reaction right around here okay so it's very important to note that we note that there's a level of reaction around here. That's what I can see on the weekly time frame. Then I go to daily time frame. Let me see. Can I adjust this level of reaction here? Because I can see it more clearly around here. Um, excuse me. Yeah, that will be right here. Okay. So on the daily time frame, you can see market has been support, support, support here got broken got broken and then market tried to you can see right here the market has come back to that same region but what is market telling you i'm not coming back no reversal pattern no reversal pattern where it came it gave us a doji right here a very doji and then he engulfs that doji so which means this market is not ready to come back any moment from now. So this guy is not holding it back. He's not holding it back. So the next level I'm looking at, of course, is this level. I can see some reactions around here. You can see the system resistance. So the next next level where this market can see any form of resistance is when it touches this area. And then if it breaks through this area, that means it's coming up to this area. Okay? If it breaks this area, this area that we are seeing here. I mean, it's coming up to this area. That's what I can show on the daily time frame. I put that down also in my book. Okay, market is has broken the last support, the last resistance, and looking for another higher resistance on daily time frame. Okay, so this market is looking for this place. I need to plug my laptop. Guys, don't let anybody scare you that forex is difficult. Forex is not difficult. It is you that needs to just practice. Forex is not difficult. You have given you the what you need to know. All you need to do is practice. All you need to do is practice. Inside your daily, okay, you have a question. Uh, let me be 
Hmm, should I give? Should I answer you right now? Okay, is your question based on what I'm showing you right now? Is your question based on what we are looking at now? So, put. Okay, we can see the break already clearly on uh, four hours. Market has broken, and then it's going to be looking for the next area of support. So, AUD card is a buy market. The buy market already, okay, has actually moved. This could have been uh, this is a railroad track. Call it railroad track, or we can call it. Uh, what pattern is this? We have we have a flag right there, a flag that has been broken. This is a flag here that has been broken. That's never where it got broken. That flag is not this one that got broken actually. It is here that this flag is not broken. Right here. Yeah. This is where the break happened. This was the flag. Before before the assistant area. And see? This was a flag. Got broken, got retested. Okay. And then we had we had um Okay, okay, Mr. So please let's let's finish let's finish the analysis then we'll take questions. Okay. So you can see this guy got broken here and then market continued up. Uh if I want to join this, can I join this pair right now or it has gone away? Can I join right now? It has gone away. Okay. Now look at what is happening on look at what is happening on fifteen minutes. See what is happening on 15 minutes. What is price giving us? A beautiful continuation pattern. Beautiful continuation pattern. We should be looking for price to come and break. A beautiful continuation pattern is on AUD card on 15 minutes time frame. So this is what can give us entry to continue with this guy. Okay? You can see this continuation pattern. So a break above. A break above on 15 minutes, a break above this channel, this dropping channel, okay? It is just, it's, a, it's like a channel for the a bearish descending wedge. Sorry? Bullish descending wedge, I'm sorry. I made that mistake in the last video also when we were discussing it. This is a bullish descending wedge, okay? This is a continuation pattern. So a break above this a break above okay it can retest and it may not retest imagine this guy comes now now have a very strong bullish engulfing candle that breaks that breaks at, at the top you know that you have a trade to go up okay so that's a way to enter so if you can be watching this for the break, those of you who are trading AUD card, if you watch this for the break and you know where we are going, where are we going? We are going to this place. So we'll be having about, uh, that's about 70 to 80 pips profit that we can make from this AUD card, from this AUD card. Okay? So this is pure price action, pure price action. We have the, we have the, we have the chart right here now. So this is a pattern, this is a pattern, okay, that's our trap, we set our trap. Now for the price to now come and enter into our trap, before we pull our trigger, we want to see a candlestick pattern that is going to give us around this area, okay. It does not mean that price cannot decide now to start coming down. Price can decide to start coming down. That's why you need to wait for the candlestick pattern on break of this, uh, on break of this, Top trend line right here. Okay, so AUD card, we are done with it. Clear put four in the chat box. Clear put four in the chat box. We'll take one more before we. One more. We'll take one more before we 
before we call it a day. Card JPY. I have card JPY. Card JPY. That's the next one. See? That will last for tonight. So from now on, we'll be doing analysis so that this thing will, will be second. I'm checking. Is it clear? Please put for in the chat box. Beautiful. So let's look at card JPY. Card JPY. Card JPY. Right click. Chart window. Now let's look at our terminal. Our trade is still dancing. It's still dancing. It has not really moved up. Okay? Still dancing. This is a demo account. Not my account. So, uh, class. Okay. Somebody is asking, can we enter market for one hour or 30 minutes? Yes, we can. Can enter market for one hour. Look at 30 minutes, same pattern. You can see same pattern on 30 minutes. Even on one hour, we have the same pattern on one hour. Okay? Same pattern on one market, but one hour is not, they give you clarity. It's, one hour just saying this bearish. It's not showing you, you know, that a lot of things happen in between the two places. Okay? But even on one hour, you can see the pattern is still showing there and they break above. So you can use any time frame, but you get a quicker entry on 15 minutes than one hour. Even though we did our analysis majorly on the four hours, you can take entry on 15 minutes. You can take entry on 15 You can even enter on four hours, no problem. Why do you enter on these four hours? If once this guy closes bullish, you enter. Once it closes as a bullish candle, the place of entry, but your stop loss level will have to be here. If you enter on four hours, you have to place your stop loss right here. Okay? For me, uh, with the account that I'm trading, I am going to I trade based on four hours. So if I enter this particular current uh, currency pair, my own stop loss will be right here. Okay? Well, that's on 15 minutes, you'll be having a stop loss around this area. Okay, but my stop loss will be around this area. But for you, your stop loss could be, could be around here. Maybe the market came, 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 came like this. We don't know how, how, how low it's going to go, how low this uh, wedge is going to move. Okay, and that's where at this place. Okay, so look at it on four hours, your own top loss could be here or even below this um, this last four hour candle. Okay, let's quickly do the last uh, the last one. Okay. That's card GPY. Card GPY this is the monthly time frame. What is it telling us? What is what story are we having here? Well the story I'm having here is the market has reached a, has actually touched a low, okay? It has touched yearly lows. It has touched yearly lows. That's one. That's one. And then the other area of resistance that we may have, very clear one, is around this area, okay? That's cool. So on weekly time frame, let's see what is happening around there. Right here, what do we have? We see that there has been a rejection. The candle pattern we are seeing here, we are seeing a lot of rejection from that support, which means this market is now bullish. Why? When market dropped, it came back and formed hammer. It dropped again, came back a doji, again another doji. And then a, bear, a bearish amount, and then a bullish engulfing candle. This is a bullish engulfing candle. That one killed the whole thing. Okay, it took power, it took over power from the from the uh, bears, from the sellers. Okay, this candle took over power from the sellers. This is a bullish engulfing candle. 
this candle right here. I don't know if Mr. Jodo can see, but this particular candle right here, okay, this candle right here is a bullish engulfing candle. It engulfed the body of the previous candle. Note, engulfing the body of the previous candle. So we know some people who have big money, they don't need to go to the lower time frame. They just enter. At the close of this engulfing, they have entered for a buy. And their stop loss will have been down below here. Okay? That's about 300 and if something fits stop loss. Okay? And then, where is it going to be the excessive profit? With a first area of resistance. You see, no. I think there's another area right here below. You know, we have support, support. And then, market broke it. Touched it to make it a resistance. We will see that clearly in this touch. We see it clearly in daily time frame. But look at market came broke this area of support, came back and touched it before dropping. Actually came back and touched it, turned it to what resistance. So for this market, there are there orders. The orders are going to go to pass through. Let me see. Is there any other order? I had head and shoulder around here. Look at this beautiful head and shoulder. Okay, so there's another small order around here. Okay, I see another small order around here. This one, I'm not sure it's strong enough. Let me see. To the right. Is it strong enough? Well, well, um, it could, could be, could be also. Could be first level of, uh, of target also. Shouldn't take anything for granted. Okay. Now you will see all these lines clearly when I go to daily time frame. You see them clearly. Can you see? One, two, three. Okay. And then we have four. So these are the orders. When you when are jump, when you are running uh, orders. This uh, sprint race that is jumping over, over, uh, orders they call it now. I think it's orders they call it. So these are the orders that this bullish trend, this new bullish trend is going to have to cross over. This one order, second order, three orders, four orders, okay? So, however, this market has been kind of ranging around this place and it's very, there's a fundamental that is affecting um, cards. There's a fundamental that is affecting cards. When we go to fundamental analysis, we'll talk about it. That is why it's still the line around this place. And that's because of the oil price. When anything happens to the oil, the oil price, it always affects the card, the card currency. Okay, but we'll get to that point. We'll get to that area we'll talk about fundamental analysis. Once oil is affected, there will always be a reaction on the card, on the card uh, pair, okay? So, because oil is not bouncing up very much, that's why we're not seeing a lot of bounce up. And we're not seeing so much volatility on card. It's because of the oil market, because of the oil market. It's like Nigeria. Oil affects the card so much, but very, very much. If there's any pair that oil affects, it's the card, the card pen. All right, so we can see these are the orders that this bullish move is going to affect. Now let's go to four hour time frame. What kind of four hour time frame? I can see a bullish what descending wedge. Simple bullish descending wedge. Bullish descending wedge. That's what I can see. Bullish descending wedge. Somebody can tell you that it's a very, but it's actually a bullish descending wedge. So I'm just waiting for if oil price, if oil price strengthens tomorrow, you will see a strong, a strong push on card, a strong push up on this card JPY. So what I'm saying here is a bullish. You will see these things. Once you know the pattern, you will always, eh? Somebody will tell we just tell you uh, I'm just seeing a bearish a bearish channel. See what you see is what you get in the forex market. 
we can all be seeing different things at the same time. I'm telling you. We can be seeing different things at the same time. Different things at the same time. And the same different things at the same time. But what is important is that whatever you see, that is what you will see. Okay? So you cannot be 100%, 100% certain. But what you see, once you can see those chart patterns, and then you are good to go. So what are we waiting for here? Is a break. Some people, when they see a pattern like this, they can actually be trading what they are seeing here. What you are seeing, this little channel that you are seeing on four hours that looks small. Some people are trading it up and down, up and down. They are going up, they are coming down. They are going up, they are coming down on lower time frame. Look at it on lower time frame. Okay? Look at it on lower time frame. You can see it on lower time frame. Some people are trading this. Some people are trading this. They will trade it up when it gets to the up part. Once they see a, look at this, a bearish, strong bearish move, you know, they enter again, top loss at the top here. You see, they come down. When they go to this place, you know, we had what reversal pattern is this? This is an inside bar. Inside bar. And this second one confirms, you know, the bullish move again. Or you can see here, you can see what? What's this? Descending. This is a reversal pattern. Bearish descending wave, reversal pattern. When it broke above it, you are already trading. So this guy can come up and come up to this point. For, for, for me, if I have to trade something like this, I will only be taking the bullish trade. I will not take bearish trade. Why? Because I know overall this market, what I'm waiting for is a break above. So rather than better to be, uh, to be careful, okay, if you are trading something like this, maybe on 15 minutes, only take the bullish trade because it's the bullish that probably goes to break out. Okay? And if you are trading 15 minutes, anything can happen. It can just be very fast. One candle can just move from down up. Okay? And if you are actually selling it, you may actually lose money. So for me, I will have just, once I see this channel in 15 minutes, I will just try to be taking the what? The bullish moves. The bullish moves. Once it's bearish, I wait. When it gets down to this place and gives me a an entry, reversal pattern, candlestick pattern to reverse, I enter for it, it sell again. Once it gets to this place, if it doesn't give me, if it gives me a reversal pattern, I close my trade. Okay? That means it wants to come down again until it breaks above. Okay? So, but for now, we are waiting for a break above this, uh, this wedge that is being formed on the 4 hours time frame. On the 4 hours time frame. But temporarily we have we have a we have a we have a buy. We actually buy now. We actually buy now because uh, we already have a buy buy trend. We actually buy now. So you can buy and then you are lucky it breaks on this on this move. Once it breaks on this move, we are still okay. We are still okay. Okay? So and because I have a bullish this is a bullish engulfing candle. This, this guy is a bullish engulfing candle. Some people some can call it, some people call this a uh, tweezer, can call it tweezer bottom, and you can also call it railway track. They also call tweezer railway. Some of, some of them have come across uh, tweezer bottom, tweezer top, they also call them railway. It's like a railway track. You know a railway track looks like now. We call this a railway track or I call it a bullish engulfing. So you can actually buy this particular currency pay as it is now. If I buy this currency pay, my stop loss about 30 points. That is. So let me even buy it. I buy it. Another way you can do this thing is once you place a buy. You see, I did not put, I did not put stop loss and take profit, but I can do it by clicking on this buy line and dragging the line to where I want the stop loss to be. Okay, I want stop loss to be here, and then I want take profit to be here. 
at least for the for the meantime. Okay, so I'm risking three point three six dollars to make about four dollars. That's just about one to one, one to one ratio because I'm only trading in between these guys. Okay, I'm only trading between these guys. So uh it's very good ratio though. But because I'm expecting a break to the upside, but I'm expecting a break to the upside, I may decide to push my uh my take profit up to this level of resistance, but I'll be watching out on 15 minutes if this guy goes to reverse. If you reverse on 15 minutes, I come out and wait for another bullish move. Okay? I come out and wait for another bullish move. If it gets to this point, I come out. Before it gets to my take profit, I can close my trade. But if it gets to this point and I don't see a reversal pattern, I just leave it and let it run to where I'm, where my target is. That is the next area of uh, resistance that I'm seeing here. Okay? So, that is all for card JP1. Are we good? Can one trade more than one pair of currency in a given any time frame in a day? Ah, of course, yes. The answer is yes. Can trade more than one currency pair. Can trade one currency. Can even trade one currency alone. Can take 10, 10, 10 trades on one currency. No problem. As long as your risk is in place. As long as you're not over trading. As long as you're not taking too much of risk. Okay? I told you people right from when we started this training. That my, what is most important to me in the forex market is how much I'm risking. How much I'm risking in the forex market. How much am I willing to lose per trade? Okay? How much am I willing to lose per day? Once I get to that threshold, even if I see beautiful, other beautiful opportunities, I need to learn how to close my eyes. I need to learn how to close my eyes from other beautiful opportunities so that I, uh, I won't be sorry in the end. Okay? So... That is that. We'll get, to, we'll get to where we're going to be discussing risk management. So that will be all for now. I think um, the questions have been answered, but if you have any questions, please. I want you to indicate if you have any questions. Indicate now. If you have any question, please indicate. I'm sorry about uh, yesterday's video. Uh, I couldn't get the video for YouTube because when I downloaded the video, I only saw blank. I, I, I could only get blank video. Okay, so you have to make do with the pre conference call we do for yesterday's class. It's, you can't, it's not working out for YouTube. So, what I may probably do is uh, do a, a class on my own, just me, possibly, of what we did yesterday, if possible. Then I will drop it. Okay. Who are those having questions? Nobody's having questions. I think everything is clear. No question in the house. Mr. Yodili, you have a question. Okay. Who else? Any other person? I'm going to meet you now, Mr. Yodili. Can I have your question? Good evening, sir. How Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. My question is, what about if the support and resistance that was drawn on monthly and weekly does not align with one hour, 15 minutes? Okay. Now, the answer is this. Support and resistance on higher time frame is stronger and more dependable 
than lower time frames. Support and resistance of higher time frames is stronger and more dependable than lower time frames. So you go with the higher time frame if uh, they don't align. Okay. Uh, Mr. Are there times when chart and characteristic pattern are not to be apart from the news? Of course, why not? It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. But most of the time, it's news that can cause that to happen. It's news. If there's no major news in the market, uh, candlestick patterns, and then um, especially when you are trading in direction of the trend, they, all, they always work. How many days do we have to exhaust the class topic? In fact, if you stop attending class today and all that I have taught you, you are making use of it, you are already successful in, uh, you will be successful as a forex trader. However, we, our plan is that we are going to take this class for the month of April. For the month of April. So, so uh, we still have like um, some few days, you know, to go. But from now on, we'll be taking analysis together so that you'll be much more familiar with it. Okay? All right, so with that note, I think uh, I'd like to Let's stop the recording here. You are welcome, Valentina. Does anybody ask a question? I'm available for your question. Okay. 